to be or not to be. Can Donald Trump be considered one of the great speakers of his age? Mike will be arguing that he can't. John will be arguing that he can. They'll both put forward strong arguments and perhaps you can help us decide with the link below whether he is or isn't. So, to start with, I'd like you to open your arguments, gentlemen, with your first point as to why Donald is a great orator. So, I, I need to do a bit of clarification before I start this. I'm not a big fan, okay? But I do believe he's made an impression. I think we can all agree there. He's President of the United States, all right? So before I make my first point, I, I want to clarify also what we mean by great. Because if we mean great by, has he got the silky delivery of a Barack Obama or a Ronald Reagan? Does he have the charisma of a Bill Clinton? Does he speak a beautiful language? No, I think we can all agree on that. But if we mean great by effective, then that's a different ball game. And this is a man who is president of the United States. It can't get much better than that. So I think, I hope we can all agree, he's an effective speaker. What makes him so effective? My three points. The first point I'd like to make about it is he knows his audience. When Donald Trump was pitching to be president, he looked at it like he would have looked at any other business pitch. And when you look at a business pitch, the first thing you've got to ask yourself is, who is my audience? And I think Trump did this better than anybody. So he managed to identify in many millions of people in America, I think a, a, a complete sense of disillusionment. He sensed that there was a wave that was building and he was able to catch that wave. And I think when you, when you, look, at, when you look at what he did, he was able to see that there were many, many people in the in the United States who would spent years suffering through um, the previous administrations who promised that things would get better, but they hadn't. And that there was a disconnect between millions of people and what was happening in Washington. I think that's a good place to, to leave your argument there, John. Just one second. I haven't finished. Your first point, please, Mike. Thanks, Boo. And, and John's made a, a point it's difficult to argue with. He's certainly been effective. I'll be looking at three key areas as well. The first of which is his non-verbal communication. I'll go on to speak about his content and finally the way he makes us feel. But if we are taking first points at a time, he's effective, but at what price? I think if you look at his non-verbal communication, the word that springs to mind for me is bully. Donald Trump bullies people in, we didn't see as much of this in the UK, but certainly in the primaries leading up to him being a Republican candidate. Uh, the stories of his notorious behaviour, how he essentially bullied other candidates. That fleeting but appalling example with Markovic, the president, uh, the, the, the leader of Montenegro. Montenegro had waited nine years uh, to get a uh, you know, accession into, into NATO. And there they were in Brussels on, on the biggest stage imaginable. And he literally shoves him out of the way to get to the front of the shot. Now, I, I appreciate that Donald Trump as head of the free world, essentially, his place would have been at the front of that photograph. But I think he had options about how he got himself there. Shoving a, a fellow NATO colleague out of the way was just one example of many. The way he hovered menacingly close to Hillary Clinton in that televised debate at that time. It was, it was really quite frightening. So I think, you know, he is effective. He makes himself big. He puffs the chest out. He has this, you know, this sort of signature gesture with the hands and arguably whether you like it or not, it's, it's his and he's made that his own. And, and it's, there are certain things we've come to expect from Donald Trump, which make him a sort of a standout speaker. But I say it again, at what price? I, th I think his, all his non-verbal communication amounts to, to bullying. bullying. Uh, that's, that's, that's my overall We'll leave that one there, Mike. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Park that thought. Your second point, please, okay. John. Yeah, yeah, good point. Irrelevant, but a good point. 
Uh, my second point, simplicity of language. So having tapped into his audience, he's thought, what, what sort of language do I need to be using to get these people on board? And you know what? He wasn't trying to talk to people in New York, the suits and the businesses, the business people or the politicians in, in Washington. He was trying to speak to real people. And many of you may have heard that during that election campaign, he used third grade language. Eight year olds understood him. And he's been much derided because of that. But actually, when you think about it, most of us, when we think, we think in simple, simple ways. Most of us, when we receive information, especially about complicated stuff, we like to receive it in simple ways. If your car breaks down, you go to the mechanic, right? Or if your computer isn't working, or if you're, you've got something wrong with you and you go to a doctor, right? They had Dr. Obama for years telling them, oh, you know, in beautiful language, all the sort of things that might be wrong inside. Donald Trump was able to say, Dr. Donald was able to say, this is what's wrong and this is what you need to fix it. So he kept that message very, very simple. We'll make America great again. We'll build a wall. You know, everything, slogans, catchphrases that people remember. Can any of you remember what Hillary Clinton's slogan was for her prime, uh, when she was trying to be president? They're not all my emails. No, <laughs> exactly. They're not all my emails. We, we all remember Trump. It's the same as Brexit. We all remember what Brexit, the Brexit catchphrase was. It's the same thing. Simple language, language that people can relate to, can understand and can, can believe. Very good point. So simplicity of language, John's second point. Mike, your second point, please. Well, uh, I was going to focus on content as well for my second point, so the timing is perfect. It clearly was simple. It clearly was effective. Again, I would argue at what price. His language lacks any sense of nuance, any sense of, of being informed about the wider picture, certainly beyond American shores, arguably even within America. Any opportunity he had to, to use language in a way that showed empathy, no. He, he went for the cheap shot every chance he got, and still does. So where you would look for a sense of someone having read a single sheet of a document to know more about what they're talking about, you kind of know the minute Donald Trump opens his mouth, that hasn't happened. He's legendary for being totally dismissive of anything of really vital importance to, to issues of the day. He just dismisses them out of hand. I think, you know, it's one thing having simple language, but it's when it's language that alienates such huge swathes of, of, of the world and of your own country, yes, he was going to build that wall. You know, what's that done to relations with the US and uh, Mexico? You know, again, almost Brexit-like thing of getting our country back, implying it was, it was lost in the first place. So I think, again, it's hard to argue it hasn't been effective, but it's how he's gone about it. The choice of words, time and time again, is, is deeply disturbing, I find, personally, and I'm sure there are millions others besides. I do actually think it's very interesting, uh, the language he uses but also the filter that, that the gentleman has. Not that I'm going to side with Mike here, but I do. Clearly you are. I, I do, or I would just like to recollect the story of when he visited the devastation of the forest fires in California. And the first thing he told the mayor of California is, this wouldn't have happened in Finland because they sweep the forest floors. Yeah, extraordinary, yeah. Very sensitive. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, yeah. your concluding Sens point. You were sensitive, but 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 true. And I think, <laughs> I think uh, this is this is another thing. He's he's completely fearless. I mean, utterly fearless. He doesn't mind saying anything. He'll just say it, whether it's true or not. Doesn't really matter. He'll say it, but he'll say it with such conviction, and he'll say it so often. So this repetition of things until eventually people, some people start to believe it. So I agree, he's completely without sophistication, but he is totally fearless. I mean, who 
would have in their right minds come up with a solution to immigration, we'll build a wall. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's a bit like Theresa May saying, well, we don't really like immigration from Europe. Let's bulldoze the Channel Tunnel. I mean, it's that sort of thing, isn't it? It's that sort of equi equivalent. And I remember the first time I heard it, so surely that, that's, that's, a, that's a euphemism or that's, a, that's an analogy that he's using. But actually, no, that is what he wants to do is build a wall. So it's, it's absolute fearlessness, total conviction. And he creates uh, in people a sort of mania, a manic fervour through, th through his through the way he speaks and through his absolute blind conviction. Um, and I think it's, it's a very scary thing, absolutely, very scary, divisive, I completely agree. My God, it's powerful. And, it, and in, in, the, in the context of, 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 an effect, of being an effective speaker, I'm afraid it works. It's a really interesting point, and it does seem to engender this sense of entitlement, doesn't it, within the, the people that support? That's right. Yeah. Interesting. Your concluding point, Mike. I think my concluding point would have to be how how Donald Trump communicates with the words he uses and on all the non nonverbal stuff I, I referred to before. It's how it makes us feel, and John's absolutely right. Uh, he does whip people up into into a fervor. And he appeals to emotions, you know, and we are emotional first and we think second. And if you've got us emotionally and we're thinking in a certain way, we are hardwired to continue thinking that way. And, you you know, then anyone else has a really tough job to convince me otherwise. That's how we're wired. We'll go with what we think rather than be uh, proved wrong. So he's very, very skilled. I'm loath to use the word skilled with reference to Donald Trump. I, I honestly don't think that there is any great skill as such there. I think John's right. He, he sort of throws it out there. Uh, but again, at huge, at huge cost. And how it makes me feel is uncertain, fearful. I think, you know, the idea of him lodged in his, in his burger filled bedroom, tweeting, at will about anything that springs to mind with half a dozen TV screens going, he's channel hopping, but you know, and just that gut reaction to something he doesn't happen to like. Uh, and and then, you know, the president of the stage is just tweeting. He's tweeting his views to the world. And, and you know, the most simplistic, for me, scary manner. Um, I, I find the whole thing absolutely baffling. I see why it's effective. I just wish it didn't have to be this way. Gentlemen, thank you. Before I pass judgment on how I feel about the whole arrangement, mm. I think we can safely say that Donald won't actually give a toss. <laughs> well, this is it. We this is it. And, and, if, and, if, and if you don't mind me saying, I mean, you spoke very nicely there, mate, about how he makes you feel. Mm. And I share that. He makes me feel that way a lot as well. But I also recognise that the way he makes me feel isn't the way he makes other people feel. Mm. And He certainly empowers. He, he, he has. And, and, and the, the passion that he's managed to evoke, I think, in so many millions of people. Mm. And, you know, it's almost like... you. I'm sorry, mate, but it almost makes it sound like you know he got there by accident. There's no accident for him being president. He's not stupid, right? And I, and I think people underestimate him. It, 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 just look at what he did in terms of using the media. And you mentioned the tweeting. But again, some people can't stand the tweeting. Other people are like, yeah, you know. He's there's, accessible. There, there's, there's, there's an ex exactly, he's accessible. He used social media. He was so clever. His people were so clever mm. in, in being able to do that. And... Um, you know that he just he I think he just realised I, I can push I can push and if if you if you think about again if you sorry but if you think about that audience there were people there who for years would have felt unrepresented who like you know they they they'd have been they'd have been sat there with a paycheck that doesn't go up if if they're in work who who have who have, who read that America's great and the economy's growing and everyone's doing great I think well this 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 isn't me. 
they'll, 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 they'll have genuine fears about immigration, but no one ever talks about it. And then suddenly you've got somebody saying something and they go, yeah, that's exactly how I feel. That's exactly how I feel. And suddenly then they realize through social media, oh, it's not just me. It's not just me and my, some of my family and we talk about it over Sunday roast. There's millions of us like, out there like that. That's what I mean by this wave, that he found this wave that turned into a tidal wave, like a tsunami. Hmm. And, and that was smart, to be able to identify that and use it. And hmm. again, it was the same with the Leave campaign, Brexit. They identified something in people and they were much cleverer in their messaging, much cleverer, I think, in their messaging than the Remainers. And Trump with Hillary Clinton, absolutely much, much cleverer. It was undeniably smart. It was undeniably clever. And there have been, without pushing my argument too far in this direction, but there have been other examples in the last 150 years of people who've been able to whip entire nations into a frenzy by doing exactly that, by, by just tapping into those really deeply felt resentments, often exaggerating those resentments beyond what they actually might have been. But yes, once you get that sense of community, then it, it, it can spread like wildfire. And all of a sudden, people who might have had an inkling they're unhappy about something suddenly agree that the idea of building this insane wall kind of makes sense. Stopping entire, fa splitting entire families at, at migration control suddenly makes sense having screaming children being ripped from their mothers at airports you know it's kind of a price worth but, but paying but we're, that, not that, talking, we're not communication is it but we're not talking about whether he's a good communicator we're talking about what he what he's created sure yeah so I started, you know, it, but it's, it's, it's again it's, but i suppose that's my, my first and last point of defense is he's doing all these things well and cleverly and uh, other people have done them the same at, at tremendous human cost I don't deny that. I absolutely um, don't deny that. So, is, you know, if the, if the basic premise is, you know, I, I'm onto a loser if the basic premise is, is it effective or not. It clearly has been. Um, you know, again, I come back to my point. At what cost? And do we therefore put him up there with the great speakers? And I think if you're going to do that, you have to include some of those more human elements that I would attach to great speakers. Empathy, a degree of intelligence, uh, and all the other great qualities that great speakers I think have. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the choice isn't really ours. It's yours. Please comment on the Speak the Speech YouTube page. What do you think? Come on. You've got you to you give us your... your... <sighs> I, I have to say, and I don't want to sound like I'm sitting on a fence, but I'm physically sitting on a fence, but I completely agree with both of you. I do think he's been incredibly effective, but Hitler was incredibly effective. And I think Mike's point of at what cost is, is key, but he is an incredibly effective communicator because he has an enthralled audience hmm. and they keep lapping it up. So, so basically you're saying I'm right. I'm saying you're both right. <laughs> more, me, more me than Mike. I think on an emotional level, he's absolutely with me. I think, no, no, I think, I think you're fine. My head, my head says... I think it was me. My head says... Uh, my heart. Yeah. 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 So good. Well, that's our first ever YouTube debate. I'm just so pleased to have won it. <laughs> you so didn't. That's the thing. Yeah, well, well, yeah. Let them decide.